morning. The pomp and pageantry was at, it, at its best today. A fanfare heralded the swearing in this morning of the ninth Bahamian Governor General. With the grace and style Bahamians have come to know of Dame Marguerite, she arrived at Government House just after noon today. The Prime Minister in his address reaffirmed Dame Marguerite's appointment as one that she is deserving of, assuring the Bahamian people that she will represent every Bahamian. And as Clint Watson tells us tonight, it's something the new Governor General pledged to achieve during her first official address. Her royal entrance was nothing short of what many expected the new representative to Her Majesty the Queen and a woman whose legacy surrounds the grace and elegance she has brought to the diplomatic corps. Dame Margaret Pinling appeared confident yet humbled, ready to take the oath of office that transitions her from a former first lady to the highest office in the land. Following the oath, she firmly signed the documents making the process official. Then it was time to take the seat of authority as she sat. She folded her hands together like to that of a prayer, symbolic of her gratitude and humility. During his address, Prime Minister Perry Christie wasted no time, declaring that Dame Marguerite's role in fighting for majority rule and tireless efforts as First Lady for more than a quarter of a century makes her deserving of this appointment. The Prime Minister is convinced Her Excellency would discharge her duty with nonpartisanship, as has been the case with every other Governor General who have served the political arena. Dame Marguerite will keep it going, that just as her predecessors did so impeccably, she too will transition into the office of Governor General without any inclination towards political partisanship. Dame Marguerite has been the deputy to the Governor General for the past two years. She therefore comes to office well-schooled in the requirements of this office. Prime Minister Perry Christie believes Tuesday's inauguration proves that no matter where you are in the Bahamas, our country enables anyone to elevate to their highest potential. Taking it a step further, Mr. Christie contends Her Excellency, as a widow and primary keeper of the flame of the most sweeping figure in Bahamian history, Sir Lyndon Pinling, has truly earned her this position. In appointing Dame Marguerite, we give honor not only to her in her own right. We also give honor to the memory of Sir Lyndon and his leadership of the fight for majority rule. The fight to free the Bahamian people from political, economic, and social degradation. In her inauguration address, Her Excellency Dame Marguerite Pinling pledged to serve the Bahamian people at all times to the best of her ability without any prejudices. Be assured, therefore, that in me, you will have a governor general who will strive at all times, both in action and in word, to promote unity over division, harmony over discord, and love over enmity. I will be a governor general not just for some, but for all Bahamians, wherever they may be, and whomever they may be. Her Excellency called on Bahamians to put their differences aside to build a better Bahamas. Let us stop fighting each other. Instead, let us come together, let us unite as one to help build our country so that we can continue to march to greatness and to goodness. And the theme clear today, and that is regardless of the various things that divide us, we're one people, one cause, the love of our country, and proud to be Bahamian. But in the words of Dame Marguerite, not bad for a barefoot girl from South Andros ascending to the highest office in the country. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News.